we've been talking for some months now about the meaning of life and particularly about the meaning of one of the unusual experiences that all of us have in our present life, the Jekyll and Hyde syndrome, that uh, dreadful discovery that most of us make that underneath is kindly, apparently good and generous exterior that we try to present to our friends and our relatives, there lies an alter ego or an old self that seems determined to do the very opposite of what we would like to do. There is one part of us that wants to be loving, wants to be kind, wants to be generous, but there is another part within us that wants to slash out at other people, to be selfish, to be angry, to lose its temper, to get its own way, to insist on its own rights, whoever it has to tramp over the top of to get those things. And what we have been talking about is the origin of that dual personality. And we've tied it back to the early days when we were created. Uh, we've shared, you remember, how this uh, man that lived in the first century told us that the maker of the world was not only a personal intellect, but was actually his father. And that he had made you to love him. That's why he made you. He made you to love him, to live in friendship with him. Indeed, more than that, he made you so that you would deep down in your heart depend upon him for the things that you need. So that you would just naturally conclude, well, now the creator that put me here on earth knows I'm here. He has numbered the very hairs of my head, and he certainly knows how all the economy works, and he knows what kind of job he wants me to do here. So if I do that job properly, he certainly loves me, and he will provide whatever money I need and whatever food and clothing I need, perhaps at times through my salary and at times apart from my salary. Moreover, you would naturally know that if he loved you the way your father loves you, then, of course, you were important to him. And that would satisfy your deepest longing for a sense of self-esteem and self-worth. And your desire for happiness would be satisfied by a real sense that he was your friend, that you were walking through the universe with the owner of the universe beside you. Now, of course, we as a race have not live that way. We have in fact determined we will not depend on this creator for these things. We will get the substitutes for these things that his love would provide for us from the world itself. And so we looked at the world and we decided, listen, we can use this world uh, to get the attributes that his love would give us or the benefits that his love would provide, we can get them for ourselves from the world. We can use the resources of the world. As long as we grab enough of them for ourselves, we can ensure our own security. As long as we grab enough gold or enough money or enough wheat or enough corn, we can ensure that we'll have enough food to eat for the rest of our lives. As long as we grab enough clothes, we can ensure that we're well clothed. As long as we make enough money from other people, then we can have good homes. We similarly looked at the same way at our own need for self-esteem and self-worth. We determined if we can get more of these clothes or more of this money than everybody else, then everybody else will think we're important or we're better than them. And that will give us a sense of self-worth and self-esteem. Of course, what has happened through the years is that there has not been enough to go around to satisfy us all. And we have at times all wanted these things at the same time. There has therefore risen up within us an ugly monster that gets irritated and gets angry and impatient when it can't get enough of the money or enough of the food or the clothing or enough attention to satisfy itself. And so there has developed within us two directions inside our personality. There is the memory of one direction that we were meant to follow, that direction from the inside of our personalities to the outside. We were meant to trust the creator of the universe for our security. We were meant to trust the love of the creator of the universe for our sense of self-worth and self-esteem. We were meant to trust the creator of the universe for our own happiness. But instead of that, 
instead of living from the inside trust that we have in him and expressing that out to other people in a fully integrated personality that was content and at home and satisfied with itself and its own life, we have in fact begun to live from the outside in, trying to get from the outside of us from the things around us, from the circumstances of our experiences, from the relationships with people. We have tried to get the security that we need and the sense of self-esteem and worth and value that we need and the sense of happiness that we need. And so there has developed an outside in direction in our personality that has produced a monster of a Mr. Hyde who seems to want to do the very opposite of what we would like to think we want to do ourselves. That's why we end up in that position that was described in a certain line in that old book called the Bible. It's in Romans 7 and 15, and it runs, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And many of us know that experience in ourselves. We want, in some sense, to live the way we were meant to, to trust the Creator for our security and to trust Him for our sense of self-esteem and self-worth. But there is developed inside us a whole direction in our personality which prevents us doing that. A whole part of us that has become a pit habituated and accustomed to depending on what other people think of us for our self-esteem and our self-worth to what our bosses think of us, to what our peers think of us, to what our colleagues or our fellow students think of us. And when they don't seem to think well of us, then we are cast down, we are disappointed, and then we get envious of the people that are receiving their appreciation and their approval, and we get jealous of them, and we find rising up within us a monster of jealousy and envy that we cannot possibly control. And that is the Mr. Hyde within us that is living in dependence upon what the world thinks of us and what the world can provide for us, rather than the Dr. Jekyll who is, has a memory uh, that he should be depending on the creator of the universe and should be trusting on the creator of the universe for his security and for his self-worth and for his happiness. And so the existence of this monstrosity within us, this dual personality in which two characters apparently contradict and fight each other within us, comes from two ways to live this life. And the way we were meant to live in gentle, kindly, spontaneous trust of our Father who made us is the way that produces the Dr. Jekyll, who is kindly, who can live with other people, who can live in harmony with others, free from envy of them and free from jealousy of them, free from anger that they're getting more than we are, freedom from irritability that they're not doing what we want them to do, freedom from resentment that they're not treating us as they should treat us, and filled instead with a sense of contentment that the Father of the universe thinks the world of us, and therefore it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Content that the Father of the universe, even in the worst moments in the economy, will continue to provide enough food and shelter and clothing for our needs. And yet there is that other Mr. Hyde within us that gets irritable because other people are not letting us get what we want. They're not giving us the attention that they should give us. They're not giving us the things, the clothes, the food, the shelter, the care that we feel we ought to have. And so there develops within us an unbearable strain, a Jekyll and Hyde syndrome that prevents us doing what we really want to do in the best parts of our personality. How do you get free from that Jekyll and Hyde personality? There is a way, and that's what we're going to talk about during the next two weeks. So please do join us at this time tomorrow.